People are about as sociable as anywhere else. Most of us feel the need to live as members of a social group. First, it's the family group that fills this need. Later, we make acquaintances and form circles of friends. To have the respect and affection of other people is one of the most important things in life. Yet we don't think about it much, except when we're outside of the group, wanting to belong. This is something Ruth and Charlie Thompson and their parents had to think about when they came here to Fairview a year ago. All strangers in a strange community. Yes, and this is something the Oster family had to think about too. Young Willie and Hilda and John. And you can see they belong to the group now, but a lot had to happen before they found their places in our community. It all began that day a year ago when the Osters first arrived in Fairview. Oddly enough, the Thompsons came to town on the same train. They were all strangers then, strangers to each other, strangers to the rest of us in town. Though they didn't know it then, the two families faced together the problem of establishing themselves in a new community of finding their places in the group. To the Thompsons, Fairview was much like their old hometown. But to the Osters, this was all entirely new. They were fresh from across the ocean, from a land where the way of life was very different, and they felt alone. Now, like any community, we have all kinds of people here in Fairview. We have our upper crust and our rank and file, our snobs and our friendly, sociable people. No, sir, the people around here don't care where you come from, it's what you are that counts. You'll find we have a fine bunch of people running this town. With so many outsiders coming to Fairview these days, our old families are becoming completely lost. I say if you hold your job and pay your bills, you're just as big as anyone else in town. But in spite of their differences, Fairview people pretty well agree on one thing, that newcomers have to show what they can do before they are accepted in any of the town's social groups. The youngsters came up against this problem right away on their first day to go to their new school. To Ruth and Charlie Thompson, it was just a problem of getting acquainted and then choosing and forming a new circle of friends. But to Willie Oster, it was a far more serious matter. He was entering a world where everything was strange and everyone might be hostile. He had to learn new ways of doing things, to overcome the differences in attitudes, language, and customs that set him apart from the group. My first pick, Jim, Tony, Charlie, Ed, Jim, Dave, Bill, Dick, Al, Melvin, Sandy, Eric, Sam, Charlie, John. I guess I gotta take you. Willie found it wasn't easy to gain acceptance in the group, but he was determined to try. Oh, we have so much fun at our Girl Scout troop, Ruth. You really ought to join. Especially since you've already got some of your badges. You really ought to come along, Ruth. It's a good bunch, and I'm sure you'll fit in perfectly. I'd love to. The meeting's tonight? Mm -hmm. Bye. 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 Say, Ruth, did you get the history assignment for tonight? Yeah. What's that, playing with dolls? This? This I whittled. Yeah? What is it? It is one of the little people my father told me about. The forest elves of the old country. The forest elves? Yes. My father says people used to believe in them. He taught me how to carve one. Gee, Will, and you made this with only a jackknife? You teach me how to whittle like this, and I'll make a first baseman out of you. Okay. From then on, Willie made friends. Once he had shown what he could do, he was accepted in the group. But Charlie Thompson was having a problem of his own. It wasn't easy for him to meet new people on their own ground, especially since he expected them to make all the advances. It seemed to him that others were only interested in football and other sports, 
and he wasn't much of a player. When the fellows made fun of him over this, he was hurt. And it took a family conference to set him straight. And the leader is Mrs. Jenkinson down the street. She seems awfully nice, and they go on hikes and... Yak, yak, yak. Can't you pipe down? Charles, that isn't a very nice way to talk. But you have been chattering, Ruth. Something wrong, son? No, nothing wrong. Ruth, you'd better start your homework. Well, Charles, come on out with it. Well, I don't suppose it really matters much. It's just that the fellows around here, they don't seem too friendly. Not friendly? Are you sure they are the ones who are standoffish and not you? After all, you're the new one. Yes, Mary, but maybe he's right. You know, kids can be pretty rough on a newcomer sometimes. Charlie, what makes you think they're not friendly? Well, gee, what do you have to do? I try and be nice with them, but they're not having any. And just because I don't play football, they act like I was poison. Football? Aren't there any other activities around school? Perhaps it's up to you to break the ice. Isn't there a camera club? You used to belong to one. Well, I guess maybe there is. Well, if I were you, I wouldn't let them get me down. Why not get in the glee club or the dramatic club? And you like history? Isn't there some sort of a group there? Why, well, sure, there's lots of clubs and activities at school. I guess I could get into one of them. Then why don't you, Charles? Well, I guess it is up to me to break the ice. From then on, Charlie did better. He discovered the common interests he shared with others and threw himself into their activities. This gave them a chance to learn to like him and to respect him for the things he could do well. At the plant, where John Oster and Arthur Thompson went to work together, they were up against the same problem. Arthur had to establish himself as the new assistant production manager. But he got off on the wrong foot right at the start. Well, I'll be going to dock us for quitting early to go to the basketball game. Who does he think he is? We've been doing this for years. Nobody works when a high school's in a basketball tournament. You see, Arthur had ignored a custom of the group, and like all groups, they resented this from a newcomer. Art, did you put this up? Why, yes, of course. You should have checked with me. The men have been doing this for years. Well, it just didn't seem right to me. Well, maybe not. But we have a good, hard-working bunch here. And one reason is that we let up on them once in a while and let them see their kids play basketball. Well, shouldn't that be on their own time? Well, maybe so. But it's been going on for so long that the men think it's their right. All you've done is to get them mad at you. You better get out of it or you're going to have a hard time. Arthur realized he wouldn't get along with anyone in the plant unless he admitted his mistake. Yeah, backing down, huh? Well, anyway, he's willing to admit he was wrong. Arthur's next problem was to show the men in the plant that he knew how to handle his job. You wanted to see me, Mr. Thompson? Why, yes. I've been looking over these blueprints for that turbine job. And I'm afraid there's a miscalculation in them. This dimension won't do for a taper like that. Gee, that was easy. I wish I'd learned to use one of those things. Huh? Oh, this handy little gadget, the, the slip stick. Well, I can show you how to use it in no time at all. From that time on, Arthur was accepted as a member of the group. But John Oster remained an outsider. He kept himself apart out of shyness over his ignorance of the ways of people in this new world. Many of the other men at the plant regarded him with the suspicion people often feel toward someone strange and alien. But a few tried to get acquainted. 
You going to the basketball game, Oscar? Basketball game? I, I do not know about it. What? You don't know about the game? The big game? I'm sorry, I do not know. What's the matter with that guy? Who let him into this place anyway? That's all right. He's a good machinist. He knows his job and he does it. Ah, yeah, so what? He can't even talk English good. He's smart. He'll learn. Say, listen. Why don't we get him to go bowling with us Thursday nights? Go bowling with us? Nothing doing. I don't want to get mixed up with that kind. What have you got against him, Hank? After all, your old man wasn't born in this country either. So what? Uh, if you want a square hit like Oscar in a bowling club, you can count me out. All right. I just thought we might get acquainted. After all, we got to work with him. Fetter Fane. No, no, Tom. Weather Fane. Weather Fane. How can I do it, Hilda? In the city, when we were living with other people from the old country, it did not matter. Here I am different. How do you do it so well? I listen to Willie. Oh, he tells me such things. And I hear the way he says them. Now, you try it again. Weather fame. Uh, it's no use, Hilda. I, I cannot wrap my tongue around this language. Ah, it does not really matter, John. Hilda was right. The language really didn't matter, except that it emphasized the differences that made Hilda and John outsiders in Fairview. To some of us, the Oster's alien background was an insurmountable barrier to our accepting them into the group. But to Mary Thompson, who knew what it was like to be a stranger, this was a challenge to our fairness and democracy. I'd like to play as Hilda Oster for membership in the Guild. Well, Madam Chairman, doubtless Mrs. Oster is a very fine woman in her place, but what do we know of her background? Jane, I think you're being silly. Are we interested in what her background is? or in what she herself is really like. This is the oldest church in Fairview. Some of the finest and oldest families in town belong to this church. Now, after all, Jane, when Mrs. Oster paid us a visit, we got along beautifully. She's a sweet woman and has a wonderful disposition. And after all, don't we believe that everyone is entitled to an equal chance? I think we could all agree on that. How do the rest of us feel? Hilda did join the guild, and soon she and John were members of the group. Hilda, I can't tell you how pleased everyone is that you're in the guild. Even if I do have a cake in the contest, I know you're going to win. Oh, thank you. Everybody's been so nice to us since we came to Fairview. Seems like you've lived here all your life. Thank you. You'll both be happy to know our minister has consented to judge the cake. I shouldn't like to be in his shoes. Oh, I just said that I'd see that they were judged. But I have an infallible jury. Please, uh, may I have your attention? We have come to the finals, and I've been, to use the vernacular, put on the spot. But I think I've found a way out of it. Here are the best judges. I'm sure they know far more about these matters than do I or anyone here. <laughs> you can guess which cake is going to win. The best one, of course. <laughs> but this is the story of two families finding their places in a strange community, learning what it takes to become members of a new social group. It's also the story of every one of us in all our relationships with families and friends, acquaintances and working associates. Every one of us have to learn the ways to live and work and play together. The ways to acquire that feeling of belonging to the group that's so essential to everyone's happiness.